Hey y'all, welcome to the Gadget Inspector channel. Now, if you're not familiar with Holy Stone, you'll mostly find their drones out on Amazon. They're mainly in that budget category, but I've reviewed several of their drones and they're usually what I call decent. They just make a decent product. But folks that don't want to spend a grip on a drone and beginners are really their target market. Well, now they've released an affordable remote ID module. Now, as of the time of this video, it's going for $89.99 out there on Amazon. But here's what's interesting. Several of their drones already have remote ID built in, and that's according to the FAA's declaration of compliance list. That's pretty good, right? I guess that depends on where you fall on this whole remote ID issue to begin with. Nevertheless, today we're going to walk through setup, which is extremely simple and then we'll mount it to my Parrot Anafi and take it for a flight. All right, you do get Velcro for mounting and I'll talk about this later. And you also get this quick start guide, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set this up. So what you're gonna do is download the Drone Go To app. Then you wanna power on the device. Now the green light on the left indicates power so that's your power level and the one on the right is for status if the light on the left is flashing that means the battery is low it should be solid so that's what you should see the light on the right should flash when you first power it on but then it should go solid if that light continues to flash just push the button once and that should make it go solid that's going to put the device in setup mode so that's what you see right now both are solid so the device is in setup mode. Now let's go into the app and we're gonna click the plus sign. So the app should immediately identify the module. So go ahead and click on the serial number there. Now just go ahead and enter the aircraft model name and the weight of the drone. Once you enter the weight, the UAS class will populate automatically. Then you're just gonna click save. All right, the next thing you need to do is power down the module. All right, when you power back on, what you should see is the light on the right flashing slowly. And that's what you see. That signifies that it is broadcasting remote identification. Now, I mentioned this uh, Velcro for mounting. This isn't the good 3M dual lock kind. I actually ordered some of that because it's much stronger and it just gives me more comfort that it won't loosen in flight. I put a link to where you can find that down in the description box if you're interested. All right, let's get out here and test this thing out. Okay guys, we're out here with the pair of Anafi and before we get in the air, I wanna show you how I have this uh, module, the Holy Stone module mounted. So let me spin the camera around, see if we can do this. Uh, right over here, so it'll focus. So you can see how I have it mounted and where I have it mounted. I just have the uh, 3M dual lock Velcro there, and I have it right, uh, right above the parrot. I believe all of the uh, uh, GPS and compass modules and all the electronics are down in here. So I uh, shouldn't have any interference or anything like that. Uh, that's one thing you want to keep in mind when you place your remote ID module. All right, let's get this thing up in the air, y'all. Okay, guys, we've got the Parrot Anafi all powered up and ready to go. We've got the Holy Stone Remote ID module powered up and ready to go. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using an app called Drone Scanner. Okay, this app allows us to track... Um, remote identification signals. You can see down here at the bottom where it says Anafi. Uh, I actually changed the name. Um, typically what you will see here is the actual serial number or the remote identification number. I went ahead and changed that just so I don't share that number with the entire world, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, you can see to the left, it's giving us AGL, so our altitude above ground level. If you click in there, you'll get a ton of other information. Once again, I don't want to broadcast that to the world, so I won't be sharing uh, any of that. 
The other thing I want to uh, bring to your attention is the uh, purple or violet colored flag there in the map. What's going to happen is once the drone moves away from us in um, distance, you're going to see two flags there. You'll see the takeoff location, um, a flag for the takeoff location and a flag for the location of the drone. So we've basically confirmed that the Holy Stone Remote ID module is in fact broadcasting a signal. And I'm not real sure why it's showing four meters um, for the AGL when we're on the ground, but hopefully that will adjust once we get in the air. Let's go ahead and do an auto takeoff of the Anafee. Ha ha ha. Such a great drone, you guys. Uh, I don't get to fly it as much as I used to, um, but uh, the Parrot Anafee is still a wonderful drone. And just a word about older drones. I know there may be a lot of you out there that still own older GPS drones that may not have remote ID built in. You still wanna fly your drone. So you'll need to get yourself a uh, remote ID module that is if you're not going to be flying in one of those dedicated areas um, of which I believe they are pretty limited right now. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is the Anafi is an older drone. It does not have remote ID built in. Parrot no longer supports uh, consumer drones. So there is no plan for adding it. Um, they have added the European version of remote ID. They did update the Anafi to accommodate for that, but not for us here in the US. All right, so that's why I have the remote ID module mounted. Let's go ahead and give it some altitude. We're just gonna go straight up here in the air. We'll go up to about 120 feet. And let me just keep an eye on the uh, other phone to make sure we it doesn't close on me or sleep on me, I should say. All right, we'll go up to about 120 feet there, right about there. All right, let's see. And we can see that the AGL has a change to 27.5 meters. So it is in fact tracking, tracking the module. All right, we're just gonna pitch ahead. I'm just gonna fly right, right ahead. Okay. And what we should start to see is the location of the drone in the drone scanner app should be reflected by a map flag. All right, how far are we out? We're out about 600 feet now. I'm gonna stop it there and park it. And you can see, see if I can pinch in so we can see that closer. But you can see that the drone has moved away from us and the drone scanner app is reflecting that on the map. All right, let's go ahead and push forward some more. Why not? Keeping the drone in my line of sight. But uh, that's another reason why I really like the Anafi. It's, uh, it's that darker slate color. So really, really easy to identify in the air. So I can, I can usually get it out pretty far. I'll take it up a little, a little bit here. Get closer to the uh, water tower there. All right, we're out about 1400 feet. I can still see the anafee to the left of the, uh, the tower there. Let's see what's showing on our drone scanner app. Okay, let's see. It looks like it did lose, it did lose the module. So here's the thing. This is one of the main things that people are concerned about with remote ID is the fact that anyone can, can get this, download this app, the drone scanner app, and track these remote ID signals, right? Now, I haven't tested it yet. I'm not sure how much information is available. 
Um, I think that the takeoff location and the location of the drone are available to whomever is within proximity of the signal, of the drone. All right, I think we have exceeded the, um, the limit of what this uh, app can pick up. So let's go ahead and bring the drone back. And the reason why I say that is if you look on the right here where it says two minutes ago, that's telling us the last time the app picked up the drone signal or the remote ID signal. And we'll see when that, uh, when that changes again. About 800, 700 feet now. Okay, right about there. So looks like, yep, looks like at about 500 feet. About 500 feet is what this, uh, this app will track up to. But let me, uh, let me do something. I'm gonna bring it from up under that um, cabana there, because that could be causing some interference. So let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna push out. We'll go back out and we'll see how far this app will actually track. Just curious about that. Ah, there we go. So 22 seconds ago, yeah. So I would say about 500 feet or so. I'm not sure if that's, that could be a, a radius of 500 feet, I would imagine. Um, but I guess that would make sense. Based on the type of phone or the type of equipment you're using to track a remote ID signal. I'm sure there's other devices out there that can track farther and wider and for a longer period of time. But if there is a Karen or a Ken <laughs> that has this app, it looks like within a 500 foot radius, they will be able to pick up that signal, the signal of, you know, any drone emitting a remote ID within that, uh, within that area. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the Anafi on back and hopefully I'm making sense. It is freezing cold out here, you guys. <laughs> I've got my gloves on, but got the fingertips exposed and it is freezing. Uh-oh, my battery, my battery's dying in my phone. But I think we've made the point here. The main thing that we wanted to uh, test here is whether the module, the Holy Stone module is in fact emitting a remote ID. It is definitely broadcasting a remote ID. All right, we accomplished what we set out to do today. We confirmed that the Holy Stone Remote ID module does broadcast remote ID. And it is one of the more affordable, if not the most affordable. I think Horizon Hobby may have one for 69. Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. But uh, this Holy Stone module goes for $89.99. And here's the big thing it's available right now out there on Amazon. That's one of the biggest problems that I've seen so far is that there's just not a lot of these modules ready for shipping at this point. Um, it was even worse back in September when I did my first video. I think it was September. May have been before that, but you get the point I'm trying to make. That's all I have to say, you guys. Hey, if this was helpful to you, please uh, give me a like. Um, I seldom do that outright in my videos. I probably should do that more, but give me a like, man. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, share the video. That's another big one, too, uh, to kind of help out. I just crossed over 30,000 subscribers. I know just a fraction of those folks actually, you know, watch my videos regularly, but that's fine. I, I'm just grateful. This is something I do in my free time. So I just appreciate when people watch, you know, sometimes when I see how many views I'm getting on some of these videos, I'm like, wow, that's pretty 
that's pretty good but i do put a lot of work into it i do put effort into it i love the creative process and all of that so um I don't know why I'm rambling and going on about that right now. Um, but for those of you that are still watching to the end, hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And watching to the end helps, too. That helps my watch time and all of that good stuff. So, all right, man, let me stop. Let me end the video. Once again, be good to somebody. Be good to yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Later, y'all.